My name is Seamus Tui. I work in the human rights and internet freedom space, and I'm an independent consultant. I work with a variety of organizations um, doing both technical advising uh, as well as with nonprofits and civil society groups uh, doing work around how to interact with vulnerable populations and uh, high-risk groups uh, safely um, while still doing interesting and useful work. I do a lot of support for international organizations, so Western, European, um, or uh, American organizations, um, but the groups that they serve are, are all over the world. These are mostly civil society actors, and when I say civil society, um, the people that I work with are um, activists, journalists, human rights actors who are trying to have conversations um, openly about the state of their society, or in some cases, uh, pseudonym pseudonymously or anonymously about the state of society uh, and changes they want to make, uh, often rights building. Not only human rights, but kind of general rights building and the kind of challenges that come with that. When I do trainings, um, my specialty is risk assessment with organizations, so small civil society organizations, um, but there's Obviously, uh, the difference between an organization and a loosely knit activist group um, often changes based upon legal status and the like. And a lot of these countries, especially ill authoritarian countries, that can shift. Um, so adversaries in the civil society space range um, from everything from vigilante groups, such as people who are trolling, um, online is a great example of this, um, or other civil society who is interested in uh, swaying the message or destroying the message uh, for releasing information about these individuals um, to governments uh, and corporations who have vested interests in the uh, kind of the work not succeeding. There are threats around information, around access, um, around people taking information about an individual and releasing it to the public, uh, humiliating them, um, causing them kind of social stigma and shame, um, all the way to physical threats, where identifying an individual can lead them to being actually uh, sanctioned physically, uh, arrested, imprisoned, uh, murdered, the like. People choose GPG uh, in high duress situations, Pe uh, and this includes when they are worried about having the information that they say privately to another party um, be revealed or identified will put themselves or others at risk. People in this space really appreciate what GPG provides. Um, GPG provides a, a level of security that uh, you really can't guarantee with other projects, um, and it's also a time-tested um, bit of security. GPG has been a standard for a lot longer than a lo the other security tools. Um, and as we see these security tools come in and out, become vulnerable and not vulnerable, disappear sometimes, then reappear in new incarnations, uh, having something that is stable and trusted um, and can be kind of a lingua franca of there's something that's still there makes GPG uh, a trusted member of the community. GPG is uh, kind of one of those gold standard tools in the space. Um, it's harder to use than a lot of other tools, and the reason you'd go to something like GPG uh, is because you need something that you can trust, um, that is kind of an older standardized tool that people know when you use it correctly, and which is the challenge, is right? It's, it's a lot about the interaction with the tool. It's an interaction with GPG that lets you be secure. Uh, it's not just GPG itself. Um, they don't, it doesn't offer a simple, easy, one-button-click solution. Um, what it offers is, when it's used appropriately with the right practices that surround it, um, you're guaranteed a very strong level of security.